Uh, can, can you hear over the uh, the party next time? We're going to just be a little louder. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm heard. Uh, my name is Matthew Marco, and I'm the rabbi at Congregation Beth Israel. Judaism, like um, the other great monotheistic religions, believes in one God who is the creator of everything. But Judaism is not so much a created religion that you have to believe in something. It's more of a religion of ethics and behavior. Uh, and one big key to understanding ourselves and our role in the world is the notion of being created in God's image, to be created in the image and likeness of God. So since we're all created in God's image, any act of violence against another person is in fact a direct act of violence against God because we're all the face of God. It also means that God chose us to be partners in the ongoing work of creation. We call it tikkun olam, which means perfecting the world or just making the world a better place to live, and that's part of our sacred charge. Um, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom, people have heard that, but the root is very similar, I believe, to my Muslim brothers and sisters of salam. It means complete, it means wholeness. Is it the same in Arabic? Complete. Salam is like peace. Peace. Well, it means peace, but the root in Hebrew is actually from a wholeness and a, and a completeness. Um, and um, the customary Jewish greeting when we meet one another is shalom aleichem, which is the same as salam aleichem, and the response is Aleichem Shalom, peace upon you, upon you, peace. Um, Jewish religious texts overwhelmingly endorse compassion and peace. The Hebrew Bible gave the world the well-known commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, the Torah also commands 36 times more than any other to be kind to the stranger. In terms of peace, every single Jewish prayer, every prayer service, everyone, uh, ends with Ose Shalom ben Ramav, may the one who creates peace on high bring peace to us, to all of Israel, and to all who dwell upon the earth. And remember, it was a Hebrew prophet named Isaiah who envisions a time when they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and nation will not take up sword against nation, and no one will again know war. May that come very speedily in our time. I had read in the email that there was a, a certain amount of questions in time that we didn't have to feel that we needed to answer all. Oh, I can. No, I can also say yes, 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 yes to pretty much it. And I think part of it is, is I mean, I, we're kind of preaching to the choir. Everyone who walked into this room and decided to sit in this panel already, I think, is 90% of the way there. It's, it's, it's getting the rest out there. Um, I heard a lot of uh, this unity uh, talk, and really, I think that's... For, for me also, it's, it's key that our differences are largely, not largely, our differences are an illusion. We, the more we realize that we're exactly the same, because if you think about it, God is everything and everything is God, what we think is so different really isn't. And uh, my friend Akif, more, the more he and I speak, the more we realize that our faiths are so alike, it's, just, it's, it's, it's shocking and astounding. Um, we share um, the sacredness of life. I think all, everyone at this table uh, believes that life uh, is sacred. Now, in terms of peace, I will say um, the Jews, well, for 2,000 years, we've been a very, very, very tiny people with very, very little influence to wield. Um, uh, we have had our word, and we've had, um, we've had what we've taught, and we've given the world an awful lot of that. Um, I mentioned before, though, the, to be in the image of God. A lot of people think, well, okay, so it says in the Bible we are created in God's image. Well, is that a statement of fact? Because does God really have an image? Or is it a call? Is it a charge? Is it um, a call to action? And I think the Jewish view of it is it is. It's a call to action. God is loving and merciful. God lifts up the downtrodden and releases the bound and feeds the hungry. And if we are to be in the image of God, that's not a given, that's our job, but then we have to start doing all of that, those things. And as many of my colleagues said, when you, when you alleviate that, when, when you get rid of the want and the need and the pain and the hurt, then you don't have the fear, then you don't have the uncertainty, and then you don't have the anger that lashes out from that. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of 
working from you know the ground up, um, and it seems very daunting because the world is a huge place. Um, we have a, a saying that it's not uh, our responsibility to finish the work, but we are not free to desist from it either. So we do what we can, and hopefully the next people come. The next people come. We talk about sort of age of Messiah. You know, what is Messiah? Now, obviously, um, some of my Christian colleagues, you believe the Messiah has come, but he's coming back. We believe he hasn't come, but he will come. So when he gets here, we'll just ask him, have you been here? <laughs> and if he knows what's good for him, he'll say, I don't recall. <laughs> The, 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 the notion of Messiah has never been one set dogma in Judaism. It's sometimes it's talked about of, yes, an actual mamash person that will, or messenger of God that will usher in this age, but for the most part, it's tied to our actions and what we do. Every act of gmilut chasidim, every act of loving kindness that we do, we create, brings us one step closer to this Messiah, this saving of the world. Um, and that's because we can create it. Is, it. is it really an actual coming, or is it a time when we, as human beings, have realized that we've not been brought into being to destroy or to hate, that we've been brought to being to love and to labor and to worship together and to create the world that I think God wants us to live in and for the most part is going, I made it so clear. <laughs> what is unclear about love your neighbor as yourself? What is unclear about doing to others as you would have them doing to you? Which, by the way, every religion that I've studied, every single one, and I stopped at about 50 just because I wanted to prove a point, every one that I have found has had that, the same adage in one form or another. Uh, we're really good at saying it. We should be a whole lot better at doing it. I don't think we need more religion in this world. I think we need less dogma in this world. We need less yes. attachment to I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. Because the people that are so convinced they're right are the most frightening people on the face of the earth. Because when you're convinced that you're right, well then necessarily, by definition, everybody else is wrong. And then you are starting, you're no longer serving God, you're now serving your religion. And I actually um, learned this, I, I met with... Um, Arakat, uh, the chief negotiator for the Palestinian people, a couple of years ago, I met with him in Jerusalem. And he said something that was very profound. He said, when we think God needs our protection, we're kidding ourselves. God doesn't need our protection. We need God's protection. And what happens is our religion gets in the way. We're no longer serving God. We're no longer serving humanity. We're serving our own need to be right and our own need to be correct. And the fact of the matter is God is far faster than any of us can ever possibly imagine and we're all just taking our best shot. And I think if we, if we get our head around that, that we're all just taking our best shot, I think we'll be a little bit kinder to the people next to us. And I think there's a slight difference in our, our theologies. I, I believe uh, we, uh, in, in normative Jewish thought, God does not create evil at all. God, does, God creates everything. God creates goodness, yes, darkness is the absence of light, and evil is simply the absence of good. It's not a thing in and of itself, at least in, in Jewish law. Um, what God did create us with is with free will, is with choice. Uh, and we also don't believe that anyone is, is born evil. We are born with inclinations. Uh, as we're very young, we're born with the Yetzer Ra. This is so the, the self-serving inclinations, and anybody who sees a baby me, 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 I, 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 knows that that's a very fully and well-developed inclination right from birth. And it takes time for us to develop our, our more altruistic, our yetzer tov, our more altruistic in, inclinations. Um, yeah, it, it is isn't. if you can create that justice in, in sort of taking your own ego, your own me, me, me out of the way, that's when you can start creating justice. And yes, there will never be peace until there's, until there's justice, but at the same time, we have a, an expression that uh, uh, a bad peace is better than a good war. Um, so it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. Uh, but it's definitely a matter of, of having, is somehow taking yourself, your ego out of it and looking at the big picture. Um, you know, and there is an expression, um, and it's from Golda Meir. And I will say, she, she said back in the 60s, I'm told, um, 
they love their children more than they hate ours, we will not have peace. And that is true for any group that, that is in conflict. Until you decide you love your people more than you hate theirs, um, you're never going to, you're just, you're not going to meet. And everybody has wants and everybody has, has needs, but they have to meet somewhere in the middle, and that's the nature of compromise. I have to be willing to scale back what I think is mine so there's room for you to have what you think is yours, and you have to be willing to do the same thing. And then it's possible. It's possible. It's right there. And every time it doesn't happen, it's heartbreaking. But it's possible. We've got to keep trying.